the Obama plan includes, you know, ending some of these excesses like rescission yes, right, and, yeah. and pre-existing conditions, but it doesn't really go far enough in in controlling costs and in um, dealing with administrative waste and also right. drug company costs and that sort of thing. And it doesn't really ensure everybody. It's not going to... Yeah, mean, the plans that are floating around uh, Congress now in the fall of 2009 don't get there. They they would still leave about 20 million Americans uninsured four years from now. And, you know, if I had gone to another country on my book and found that 5 8% of the people were uninsured, I wouldn't call that a success. Right. All the other countries are 100%. They're right. not at 90%, you know, which we're not even close to. But and, they, and they take good, I mean, they take good care of people. People are not dying in the streets. They're not, you know... Um, I mean, one of the things that I think is really interesting about the debate here is that there's this notion that there's all these weights in other countries, as if there's no weights for services in this country. Yeah, yeah, you, you can, there are really good comparative data on this. In some countries, you wait a lot longer than the U.S. Canada is the classic right. case for some procedures in the U.K., but a lot of countries, Germany, France, Japan, Switzerland, have shorter waiting times for an appointment, shorter waiting times for surgery, either elective or acute. Um, many countries have shorter waiting times, and they all have broader choice. This notion of in-network and out-network doctors, and right. you can't go to the doc who's not approved, you know, or they charge right. you $10,000 or something. Every doctor in France is in network. Every doctor in Germany is in network. They don't have that concept. Right. You pick the doctor. You get the procedure, and insurance has to pay, usually in a matter right. of days. It's just different insurance from what we have. So what model do you think would be most successful, given the political ra realities in this country? The, the most important thing is to set the goal. The goal ought to be, in my view, universal coverage at a reasonable cost. And if you decide to do that, as I, there are a lot of ways, as I say in my book. You can do it through government-run socialized medicine networks. You can do it through private private providers and a public single payer, that works fine. But a lot of countries do it with private insurance plans. But it's not for providers. profit insurance, right? Yeah, no, no other country lets insurance companies make a profit on basic coverage. Right. And they regulate, as I was just going through. They, right. they have impose rules on the insurance companies that we never have. But uh, if you're an American who's afraid of government, if you think, I don't want big government messing with my health, it doesn't have to. It can be done in the private sector because lots of other countries do it, but they have to regulate the providers and particularly the right. payers more than we do. Well, you made an interesting point in a speech you made at a, a Physicians for National Health Program conference, and, and I'd like to end with that because I think that the point you made was really important, that we in this country have not made a moral decision or had a, have a moral consensus that we should pay for each other and pay for sick people to get care and once we make that that decision, then from that we can create a system. And and I'd like you to kind of talk about that because I think that's a really important point. Yeah, no, that's absolutely clear. In my book, all the other rich countries that have all of them have universal coverage, they went about it differently from what we did. They first settled on the goal. They said, "Doggone it, we're a rich country. We are going to provide health care to everybody in our country." We're going to have universal coverage. And once you make that commitment, then you can come up with a mechanism to provide it. And right. that's what they all did. In our country, we're so hung up on the mechanics, you know, insurance company reimbursement rates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We keep losing sight of the goal. Now, here's the important point. If you cover everybody, the countries that have universal coverage spend a lot less. Right. Uh, and have better health results. And that's built in. Once you cover everybody then cost savings follow from that right. decision. It's not like you have to cut right. costs first and then that'll pay for universal coverage. As a matter of fact, universal coverage cuts costs. It provides better care and um, it allows for, as I said, for the political will to get cost control. So that should be, in, my, in all the other countries, that was the first step. Let's, right. Here's the goal, let's get there, and then let's find a way to get to that goal. But we've done it backward. Basically. Well, and we also seem to understand things backward because we think that if we cover everybody, it'll be, got, you know, astronomically more expensive instead of 
less expensive. Yeah, the whole rest of the world proves that to be wrong. Right. Uh, right. Universal coverage, um, not only I, to me it's a moral imperative, but it's, it's also an economic imperative. It definitely cuts costs. It saves money to cover everybody. Right. Well, I think everybody should read your book and um, you. and go out there and fight for what we really need because this is not going to be over when it's over in Washington, I think. Yeah, it's clear that Washington isn't going to do it, and it may be that we're going to get to universal coverage on a state-by-state -state basis. If you take a look at my book, some countries did it that way. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking sure. to me. Sure, delighted, Suzanne. Okay. Thank you.